Um, what a day. I am so excited to be with you on this first full day. Uh, Father Mike and I are just pumped to hang out with you tonight. Um, we've been joking, we've been planning these talks for months, and we keep joking that we should just like walk out on stage and be like, dude, you really need friends. Like you just really, really, really need friends. And then just like dance. That's what we decided to do. So, um, but I, I guess, I mean, I heard it said once that you become like the five people you spend the most time with. Choose wisely. You become like the five people you, cho- you spend the most time with. Choose wisely. Think back to elementary school, right? Or that blessed and glorious time in all of our lives called junior high, right? Please, Lord Jesus, never again, right? Or maybe high school. Or like so many of you here in college, right? I mean... You know who you hang with, right? Or maybe some of you are grad students or, you know, out in the work world for the first time or some of you are, you know, engaged or you just had your first baby or you just had your eighth baby or you're a new baby priest. Um, There are so many, I am, I, I like there, this is like the adorable nun fest, amen? Like, I just... They're, I, like, they're edible. You could just like eat them, right? Like I just want like, oh, it's, it's the best people watching of all time is this kind of stuff, right? I just, oh, shout out to all you nuns. So I know for myself, if I were to tell you the five people I hang out with the most, they look something like this. These are the five people I hang out with the most. So this is my family, I know. So I, I love this picture because um, that's my husband, that's Swaff. Um, our last name is Swafford. His name's Andy. I call him Swaff affectionately. Um, he's actually a theology professor at Benedictine College. I know you're back there. Shout out to my hometown of Atchison. Um, they call him Doc Swaff or Swaff Daddy or P. Diddy Swaff or um, my personal favorite, David Hassel Swaff. Um, <laughs> And he is a very attractive man. We've been married 12 years. That's Thomas and Fulton and Kate and Colby, Colby Joseph. And I love this picture because everyone sees this and they're like, oh my gosh, like your sweet family. And I just wanna be like, lies, hashtag lies. Because every picture has a story, right? I just wanna, I wanna point out that this was one of those days where we took over 200 pictures. And this is the only picture where all of us are looking at the camera. And it's one of those days, I don't know if you've ever had this family picture day where your mom's like, look, 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 I'll give you ice cream, I'll give you pizza, I'll give you a $10 bill, I just need you to smile right now, right? Like, I just need this to happen. And I'm sure a lot of you, I'm sorry if you can throw the picture up one more time, I love it. At first glance, do you see my baby up there in the right-hand corner? Yeah, that's a rock on his head. Do you see that? (laughs) Like, that's a boulder, actually, right? Things you don't see, right? Like he picked up this huge rock and I tried to take it from it and it was like World War III. I was like, it's good. It's our pet rock. It's in our Christmas card. I don't even care, right? (laughs) Every picture has its story. And the reason why I like to show that is because one of my favorite quotes is, the reason why we're insecure is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Amen? Social media, it has this like power screens and and just it has its way as you're like swiping and and scrolling and you just like perfectionism, competition, comparing, like insecurities, pressure, and it just mounts. And then you take your phone and you like put it on your nightstand and you're like, why do I feel just like a little bit worthless right now? Like where is that coming from? And just, I mean, I'm not a hater. I, I love social media. Like there's a place for it. Like phones are not going away, right? We know that. But it's definitely messing with our relationships and our friendships, and I think it's pretty fair to say that it's affecting it. I don't know about you, but I think in different times in life, there are two questions that kind of subconsciously come at us, especially when it comes to relationships and friendships. And it hits you almost like when you're you're least expecting it. And those two questions are, am I enough and am I truly loved? Am I enough and am I truly loved? I come from like the most amazing family. My, my parents are just like unbelievable parents. I have two little brothers who are 6'4", um, but I'm still the big sister, right? I'm a foot shorter. It's like, oh, your little sister. No, 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 big sister, right? My parents are incredible. I'm actually, they're actually here tonight and it's my dad's first ever focus conference and I'm just like so pumped, so I know. And I was raised and I was loved. But then in seventh grade, 
I was bullied so bad that I had to switch schools. And I look back on that time, and if you would have asked me what is true friendship, I don't think I could have defined it for you, but I could have told you exactly what it feels like to be rejected. And from that moment on, in my life, I started building walls just around me, brick by brick, just walls, facades on each side, asking the question of, am I enough? Am I truly loved? Do you think I'm enough? Like, do you, am I enough for you? Am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Am I talented enough? Am I creative enough? Am I athletic enough? Do you like me? Do you love me? Like, do you accept me? Did I make the team? And these walls just kept coming up all around me. And they're invisible in some ways, right? But you can kind of change them around to what people need or what you think they need, especially when it comes to dating relationships. And those, what do you see? Am I enough? Am I loved? Do you love me? And I watched these walls grow around me. And I remember, you know, you stand behind them because they're there for protection, right? But they're also there for, to make sure that you're, you don't be rejected. And I remember people would always ask, you know, like, hey, Sarah, how you doing? And you're like, oh, good, great. Busy, good, you know, fine, fine, awesome, good. So good, so busy, so good, right? Isn't that what we say? Like, how you doing? So good. I'm fine, really. A girl told me one time that fine actually stands for freaked out, insecure, nervous, and exhausted. Amen? I was like, truth, right? We hide behind fine. And I'm telling you guys, that job of trying to keep those walls and facades going, it was the most exhausting thing I've ever experienced. And then I went to college and it just upped the ante. Am I enough? Am I truly loved? It affected all of my relationships, all of my friendships. And then I hit a place where the exhaustion was just too much and I signed up for a retreat. I'm pretty sure my friend signed me up for the retreat, but I was there, right? I'm sure you've all been signed up for a retreat as well. And I remember the Saturday night they had adoration and confession. And I hadn't been to confession in a long time and I remember getting in line for confession and going all the way to the front of the line, got to the door, got out of line and got back in it again and did it again, right? It's okay if you do it tomorrow night, it's totally normal. And so when I got back in the line, I finally went in to this priest and I just laid out everything that I just told you. The pressure, the insecurities, the fear, the intense fear of screwing up my vocation, of not being enough for the person that I was dating, for the person that I wanted to date, not having friends. If there's one thing I hear more than anything, it's, Sarah, I don't have any friends. The loneliness that is out there right now, I remember feeling that, but I was fine, I was great, everything was good. As leaders, you're taught to not show weakness. Everything's good, I'm great, we're fine. What can I do for you, right? And I walked into that confessional and I laid it out for this priest. And he looked at me and he said, Sarah, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to build a box and I want you to put everything that you're struggling with into that box. And I want you to drop it off at the feet of our Lord and give it to someone who can actually do something about it. And I want you to fall into his arms and I want you to let him love you like no human can. Because you're going around making idols and gods out of all these people and they will, that will always disappoint you. And that's too much pressure for them because they can't be your God. And Sarah, you don't need a savior because you already have one. They don't have to be your savior. You already have one. You fall into his arms and you let him love you and heal you and forgive you and make you whole. And then after you feel strong and you've been running, you stand up, you've run with him. You run to him, then you run with him. Don't look in any other direction. And when the time's right, glance to the side and maybe that's who you're supposed to be with. See who runs with you. The best dating advice I ever received was from a priest and a confessional. So when people tell you that priests don't know what's up, drop, kick, good, excellent. <laughs> he said, run. And that night, you guys, I realized for the first time in my life that what I had done is I had put a wall around my heart from God. I looked at our Lord and I said, I so desperately don't want to fail you. I don't want to disappoint you. I want you to love me and I want to be enough for you, Lord. 
And so I'm gonna keep my distance because I don't know if I want you to see everything, all of my weaknesses. You guys, I had it completely backwards. It took me 19 years to figure out that that was backwards. And our Lord said to me, bring it to me. Let me heal you. Run with me. You don't need to hide from me. Your identity is rooted in the fact that you are my beloved daughter and you can't do anything to change that. I love you and you're enough and you will always be enough. That's the truth. And that night, bricks started to fall. And it was cool because I know a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, so you started running and then you like glanced to the side and Swaff was like blinking neon green. That's amazing, right? Like, no, not, not at all. Actually, I started running. I started going to mass every Sunday. I started going to confession. I started reading good books. I started going to adoration. I found out what that was. That was, that was a good thing. I started going and feeding my faith and I started running and I glanced to the side and guess who I saw? A strong Catholic group of women. I had, you guys, I didn't trust women as far as I could throw them. Women hate each other, it's a problem, right? Like, I looked to the side and there was these like strong Catholic women. And you know what they did? They invited me to be vulnerable, to be myself, to share my weaknesses, to share my struggles, to be there with me, to be in the mess. And we started running. And out of the corner of our eye, we saw this group of strong Catholic men. And it was amazing. For, for the first time in my life, I was able to look at those guys and say, those are my brothers in Christ. It's not like a flirt fest, like which one am I gonna date next or like how can you affirm me? It's not about what can I take from you to try to fill holes in me. I saw, I saw these Catholic men for the first time as my brothers in Christ, as warriors going to battle with me. And it changed the way I saw guys. I saw these Catholic women, these Catholic men, and we were running. And that's what I wanted. When I look at that time, I remember we were very early in our faith and we were just trying to figure out like, okay, and I don't know if you feel this way, but I, feel that I remember feeling this way. Do you ever feel sometimes like, I know exactly what I don't want. I know exactly what I'm not supposed to do. I know exactly what my wounds are. I know exactly what I don't ever wanna go through again, but I'm not really sure what the heck I'm supposed to do, like, do right now, right? What am I supposed to be like running, we're running. I don't know what I'm doing, right? Like prayer life, something else, right? Like, okay. I, I was like that, you know, I was like, I want this. Yeah, let's go. Let's run through a brick wall, right? Like I'm ready, but I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. And so a group of us girls one night in college, we got bold and we asked a group of our guy friends, we're like, okay, like what are you actually looking for? Like what is like in a significant other, in a spouse, like, like what is the most attractive thing about a woman? Like what are you looking for? And they got into a man huddle. Have you guys all seen a man huddle before, right? <laughs> So they get into a man huddle and they, it's like rugby, right? You know, and they like put their arms like around each other's shoulders and they start swaying back and forth like this. And there was grunt, grunting, right? And so they're over in this man huddle for like 10 minutes and all of us girls are like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. Like they're like actually talking about this. And so they break huddle and they come back and they're like, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. And we're like, this is gonna be so good. And they're like, okay, most attractive thing about a woman. Holiness and confidence. And we were like, I'm sorry, come again? And they were like, holiness and confidence. Even guys that maybe aren't into their faith would say they want a girl who knows who she is and does the right thing. And we were like, wow, thank you. That is deep, wow, like thank you. And it was the most awkward exit from a building of all time, right? We were just like, wow, thank you, wow. And we just like, walked away, right? And we got, back to my, we got back to our apartment and one of my friends like throws her coat down. She's like, why do we even ask? We asked, we don't even know what the heck that is, right? Like, just watch me be holy and confident, watch me frolic, here I go, right? Like, I, I remember I was like, I got nothing, right? So, so we went back to them and we were like, okay, hi. We're gonna need some like practical tips and tools for how to like execute this. Um, we all kind of thought we had to like dye our hair and lose 10 pounds. Um, so where this is proving to be a little more difficult. And so they busted out a napkin and they started like writing down these traits, these characteristics, you know, like these virtues. And they called her the simply irresistible virtuous woman. 
And we're like, ooh, this is good, this is good. And so we started the Simply Irresistible Virtuous Man list, right? And, um, and so we like started writing all these things down. And we like, pre- we came to- we like got together and we presented them to each other. Um, theirs was on a napkin, ours was in Excel, color-coded, right? Because <laughs> men and women are different, right? And so, so we like sat down and it was so eye-opening. And like the last couple of, like throughout the years, I asked like guys, I'm like, guys, what do you think should be on this list? Like, ladies, what do you think should be on this list, right? And so I brought them with me because it's just easier to see it all at once. So this is what the men wrote down for the women, the Simply Irresistible list for the women, okay? It's kind of overwhelming, but here we go. Ladies, ready? This is what the men said. She's feminine. She's gentle and kind, graceful and sincere, patient and flexible, doesn't gossip, isn't rude, tries to eliminate drama, not create it, poised and modest, open to the needs of others, nurturing and welcoming, joyful and fun. She's confident. She stands up for what is right and seeks the truth. She has courage and is not afraid to confront and help someone. She's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. She speaks with conviction. She's responsible, prudent, humble, and honest. She's secure. She's sensitive to the needs of others. She's committed. Her relationship with God comes first in her life. She puts others first before herself. She strives for excellence in all things and chastity and sobriety and tries her hardest in academics or her career. She's not led solely by her emotions and passions. She maintains balance and order in her life. She lives a life of charity and service. She's forgiving, trustworthy, loyal, and pure. All the ladies in the house, just take a deep breath in. Let it out, good. One more time, deep breath in. And let it out, good. Ladies, repeat after me real quick, striving. Striving, not perfect, because perfect doesn't exist. Striving, deep breath in and let it out, good. I always tell the men, I'm like, men, right here, right? Like this, this list, is not, we don't go like, oh my gosh, I wanna be this. We like look at this list and we're like, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that. I messed that one up at dinner. I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that. I just need a nap, right? Okay. <laughs> Ladies, striving, not perfect, striving, right? Huh. Ladies, it's, it's so good. I always tell the men, I'm like, we had to do deep breathing, right? So like, fellas, ladies, do you want to see this simply irresistible virtuous man? Right? All the ladies are always like, put up the slide. All the guys are always like, or not. Like, I feel like this is going to be, guys, it's going to be okay. We're, we're in this together, okay? We got this, okay? This is what the women wrote down for the men, okay? He's masculine, confident, and committed. He's masculine. He's a leader, provider, protector, initiator, chivalrous brave and courageous, gentle and respectful, intuitive and patient, joyful and fun. He's confident. He stands up for what is right and seeks the truth. He has courage and is not afraid to confront and help someone. He's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. He speaks with conviction. He's responsible, prudent, humble and honest. He's secure. He's sensitive to the needs of others. He's committed. His relationship with God comes first in his life. He puts others first before himself. He strives for excellence in all things and chastity and sobriety and tries his hardest in academics or his career. He's not led solely by his emotions and passions. He maintains balance and order in his life. He lives a life of charity and service. He's forgiving, trustworthy, loyal, and pure. All the men in the house, just just shake your shoulders like this. Be like, I'm all right, 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 right? I won't won't make you deep breathe, right? But like, we're all right, we're all right, we're all right, right? Okay, good. Fellas, repeat after me, striving. Striving. Not perfect, because perfect doesn't exist. Striving. All the girls just fan yourself, right? And all the guys just, it's all good, right? It's all good. Something very manly about the word striving in a large crowd, right? Okay, good. What I want you to notice about these lists, did you guys notice how confident and committed were the exact same list? Did you guys see that? We share humanity, it's a crazy thing, right? Like. And the feminine and masculine, that's what the women said about the men and the men said about the women, but so many of those things are interchangeable, right? What is it? It's virtue. I love the whole you do you. It's like, well, you do you is straight up relativism, but if you do you with Jesus and virtue, we are good, right? Like, you do you and live out these, these I mean, yes. And this, isn't, this is just a fraction of all the amazing virtues that are out there. But I took one look at this list and I was like, yeah, this, this is what I want. This is the wife I wanna be. This is the mother I wanna be. This is the daughter of God I wanna be. And I know all of you are tempted 
to do what I wanted to do, which is like say, oh, okay, good, good. So I have to like check all these boxes and like get my act together, right? And like, get, you know, okay, do this and then God will love me. And then I'll make the team and then I'll find my perfect spouse and then I'll blank, blank, blank and blank, blank, blank. No, you guys, this is called, I know my identity as a beloved daughter of God. And for you men, you know your identity as a beloved son of God. He delights in you. Your identity is steeped in the fact that you have Jesus Christ as the King and Lord of your life. And out of that love flows virtue. Out of that love flows this list. It's not about checking boxes. We don't play the game the world plays. This is different. Virtue is different. Virtue is beauty and truth, like flowing out of you. When I was writing my book on emotional virtue for men and women, I was going through relationships. A lot of people think it's just about like significant other dating relationships, but it's family, it's friends, it's significant others, it's your relationship with God, it's all relationships. And it was the hardest thing I've ever done to try to write that book. Because if I could, I, I wanted to go to lunch or I wanted to go grab coffee with you, like that would be my preferred method, right? So I just wrote a letter to you and I said, this is what I want you to know. And when I was writing that book, there was one friend that I turned to over and over and over again. He was a dear friend of mine. He lost his parents before he was 20. He had incredible hardships in his life, but he understood friendship and he understood the human condition better than anybody else. And I went to him over and over and over again. He's probably a good friend of yours as well. His name is St. John Paul II. Yes. And I would sit at his feet and I would look at him and I would say, how do we do this? How do we run? How do the women trust women? How do the men trust men? How do the women and men trust one another? How do we look at each other differently? See, I, I just, I turned to him so many times. We're leading, my husband and I are leading a pilgrimage to Poland um, and to Rome. We're tracing the footsteps of his life this Holy Week 2018. And we're gonna trace his entire life. And I can't wait because the more that I learn about him and the Polish people, the more I realize Friendship is what really brought him to the core. The Nazis came and they were like, we're gonna take your faith, we're gonna take your Catholic culture. And he said, no, not me, not us, not my friends. And then the communists came and said, we're gonna take your faith and we're gonna take your Catholic culture and we're gonna try to destroy your friendships and destroy your families. And he looked at them and said, no, not me, not us. And he went on to be Pope. Then here comes the sexual revolution and secularism and utilitarianism and relativism. And he looked at it and said, nope, not me, not us. Not my friends here, not the church. And he stood up against it. He banded people together. Like, like Jim said, warriors together on a battlefield. You guys, we desperately need each other. We need each other. You need friends. You need accountability. The two hardest things about being friends with someone is vulnerability and accountability. You have to have it to go where you need to go with our Lord, to have those friends who look you in the eye and say, speak truth to my heart. The world is loud, speak truth to my heart. My challenge to you tonight is to pick two people in your life, name them, go to them tonight, go to them tomorrow, FaceTime them, I don't care, just look at them and say, let's run. I want what she's talking about. I want virtue, I want confidence that I'm a beloved son or daughter of God, I want this. Remind me when times get tough, hold me accountable. I want faith, I want virtue, I want conviction, I want confidence. Walk with me, run with me. I wanna leave you with this quote of his, of St. John Paul II, it's my favorite. Do not be afraid, do not be satisfied with mediocrity. Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Let's pray, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for every single person in here who gave you their yes this week to go deeper into their relationship with you and with one another. Father, I ask you to give us a radical boldness when it comes to our friendships, to be honest about what we're struggling with, to put you at the very center of our life, to put our friends first in our lives to love them for their sake, not for ours. I ask you to raise up soldiers and warriors to go to battle together. Lord Jesus, I ask you to raise up men 
that are true brothers in Christ to fight the battles that they're fighting together. I ask you to raise up women, sisterhood of honesty and love. And I pray that they run together, the men and the women. Heaven is friendship. Lord, we know heaven is friendship with you, friendship with the saints and the angels and friendship with one another. Help us to begin our heaven here on earth. We give you all the glory as we pray. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. John Paul II, I'm praying for you. I love you. God bless you guys.